Welcome to Hope Sabbath School, an in-depth, interactive study of the Word of God. We're in the middle of a great series on the book of Genesis, and I'm excited because we're doing something very special in this series. The whole series is being taught by our Hope Sabbath School team teachers. And I want to welcome the team today. It's great to see you. And I'm excited because John's going to be leading the study today. We're, we're wanting to inspire you to say, I think I want to start a class. The Holy Spirit's been speaking to my heart. You can go to our website, download the same one-page interactive outline that we use on the study here. Start a class in your area. We'd love to see a thousand more in-depth interactive right. classes. Amen? Amen? So we're going to be just doing that in a special way during this series on Genesis, just Hope Sabbath School team teachers. The other reason I'm excited is we're offering a valuable gift to you during this series. Studying Genesis, we've got a wonderful resource. It's the book Patriarchs and Prophets. We want to offer you a digital co copy. We've got 20 plus languages that you can choose from or the audio book absolutely free. The first 21 chapters deal with Genesis. There's another 52 chapters going through prophets all the way up to King David. It's a beautiful uh, digital version of the book. We want to give it to you absolutely free. All you have to do, go to our website, hopetv.org slash hopess. Right in the middle of the screen, it says free gift. Push the button and you can ask for your free copy. And I hope you'll do that. Well, I want to welcome not only the team here, but we've got some remote team members joining us. Rodney, always good to see you from Toronto. Looking forward to the study today. Addison from grad school in Texas, good to see you. Originally, of course, from British Columbia. And Pastor Puya all the way from Hawaii. Good to see you, Pastor Puya. We're so thankful for our remote team members who add to our discussion. We're also thankful for you, our Hope Sabbath School members, and we love to hear from you. Here are just a few emails we've received. Mishek from Zambia. I've been following Hope Sabbath School for some time now, and your lessons have really helped me a lot to enhance my spiritual life. Mm, praise God. Amen. Amen. My prayer is that you should continue with the same spirit. Mm -hmm. Your studies are powerful and rich. They've impacted numerous lives. May God continue blessing you as you labor in His vineyard. Well, Meshach, thanks for writing to us from the beautiful country of Zambia. We're glad you're part of our Hope Sabbath School. Here's a retired pastor in California writing to us. His name's Joseph. And Joseph writes and says, When I was a pastor and Bible teacher in Pakistan for many years, I used Hope Sabbath School outline to teach my class <laughs> when it was my turn to teach. Now, since I'm retired and in the U.S., I watch Hope Sabbath School every week, and it helps me to teach the study when I'm asked in my church or invited in an area church. It's a great help to me, and the class appreciates it. Thank you, and God bless you. Well, Pastor Joseph, we're happy that you're being blessed. Amen? Amen. Yes. And it's so exciting. This series we want to motivate more people, young adults and older, to say, I'm going to start teaching a class. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing with us from California. Here's a note from a donor couple in Washington State. Mm -hmm. And they write and say, we watch Hope Sabbath School every week and we're greatly blessed. We pray for you. Amen? Amen. We pray for you. Thank you. Praise God. Thank and we you. pray for your ministry and that Amen. God will work in a powerful way through you to reach the world. We feel like we have learned to love each member that joins, and we miss seeing them all. Mm. May the restrictions be lifted soon. Mm. And here a testimony. We've recently been paid for some services we've been waiting for for a long time. Mm. And we're sending a donation mm. to Hope Sabbath School. Mm. We consistently pray for the millions of people who watch and listen to Hope Sabbath School that hearts will be surrendered to Jesus. Amen. And a donation of $500 Amen. to support Praise the ministry the of Hope Sabbath School. Thank you, donor couple in Washington. Thank you, each one of you who say, I want to be part of this miracle. Mm -hmm. You can go to hopetv.org slash donate. Click on the donate button and be part of the miracle God's working around the world. Here's a note from Bruce 
in Rwanda, beautiful country of Rwanda. This is to share my gratitude for Hope Sabbath School. Isn't it humbling to hear from all around the world what God's doing? It has served as both a source of information and an encouragement on my spiritual journey. May God bless your ministry and kindly pray for me that I may remain grounded in the Word of God Mm -hmm. and that I will represent Him well to those around me. Amen. 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 Well, Bruce, that's a beautiful prayer. God bless you there in Rwanda. We're glad you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family. One last note from Charlene in South Africa. Charlene writes and says, I love to watch you guys. I watch regularly after I was baptized last year. Amen. I got baptized on October 30. I am now a fully baptized church member, (laughs) and I enjoy watching you on Sabbath. God bless you all, Charlene. Well, Charlene, we're so thankful that you have surrendered your heart to Jesus, and you've confessed that through baptism. And we're glad you're part of our Hope Sabbath School family. God bless you. Maybe you want to start teaching a class, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Say, I'm going to start. Gather a few people, and you'll be inspired uh, as John teaches us today. But before we go into our study, we want to sing our theme song. It's just short. It's written by the sons of Korah, and my wife put the tune to it from Psalm 47. Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout to God with a voice of triumph, for the Lord Most High is awesome. He's a great king over all the earth. Let's sing it together. Oh, clap your hands, all you people, shout to God with a voice of triumph, for the Lord Most High is awesome, He is a great King over all the earth. Oh, clap your hands, all you people, shout to God with a voice of triumph, for the Lord Most High is awesome, He is a great King over all the earth. For God has gone up with a shout, The Lord with the sound of a trumpet Sing praises to God, sing praises Sing praises to our King, sing praises Oh, clap your hands, all you peoples Shout to God with a voice of triumph For the Lord Most High is awesome He is a great King over all the earth For God is the King of all the earth Sing praises with understanding Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. Oh, clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with a voice of triumph. For the Lord Most High is awesome. He is a great King over all the earth. He is a great King over all the earth. He is a great King over all the earth. I love that song. (laughs) And I say, the Lord Most High is awesome. And I know, John, as you lead us in our study today, we're talking about a solemn judgment, but also a message of grace and hope. Mm -hmm. So God bless as we study today. Thank you, Pastor Derek. And it's good to see everybody. Let's pray together and then we'll dive into our study. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the wonderful privilege that we have to gather as a worldwide family to study your word. Amen. Speak to us a message of hope and encouragement, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, in a matter of just a few short chapters in the book of Genesis, of course, as we're looking at the book of origins, we see a very different world than the world that came out fresh from the Creator's hands. Mm -hmm. Let's look, open our Bibles together to Genesis chapter Mm 6, and we'll read verses 1 through 7. Laurel, if you could read Genesis 6, verses 1 through 7. All right. I'll be reading from the New American Standard Bible. Now it came about when the men began to multiply on the face of the land, and daughters were born to them that the sons of God saw that the daughters of men were very beautiful, and they took wives for themselves, whomever they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever, because he also is flesh. Nevertheless, his day shall be one hundred and twenty years. Then the Nephilim were, were on the earth in those days, 
And also afterward, when the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, those were the mighty men who were of old, men of renown. Then the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great on the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Mm. The Lord was sorry that he had made man on the earth, and he was grieved in his heart. The Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of the land, from man to animals, to creeping things, and to birds of the sky, for I am sorry that I have made them. Mm. Mm. So, and Rodney, would you read for us verses 11 and 12? And again, looking at how does the Bible describe the condition of the world? I'm reading from the New King James Version. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. So God looked upon the earth, and indeed it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth. Mm -hmm. Mm. Thank you. So what do we see here? Is what was the reason for this cataclysmic, this worldwide flood? Mm. How does the Bible describe the reason for that? Jason. Well, this beautiful creation that God has made, not only has their sin entered, but now it's all getting marred. It's all getting destroyed. You have this mixing. Uh, God's people are now uh, in relationships and having children with uh, people who are not of God. And so there's a lot of corruption and bad things going on. The mm -hmm. thoughts of men only evil continually. So it's just, it's a really bad, bad place. Mm -hmm. mm. Yes. Sabina, what else do you see here is another reason why this global flood? Yeah, I think I would just, you know, double, double what Jason shared for me. The key verse here is verse five that is saying that God was seeing that the thoughts and everything in them was just evil continually. So God in his love and justice, he couldn't bear anymore with that. The Bible says that he even uh, repent in some way of having created that. So uh, I can only wonder how the heart of God was shocked and suffering for the suffering that people were causing to each other because of their evil. You know, not only causing themselves suffering, but also likely causing a lot of destruction among themselves. You know, it's an incredible thing when we do Bible study. There is a word that is translated in the New King James as a tent. Uh, other translations has imagination. The Hebrew word yetzer, which means the purpose or from the very form, the framing of an intention mm -hmm. was only wicked. And it appears only twice in Genesis mm -hmm. and very few times in the Old Testament. And it just shows you the intent and purpose of wickedness. Travis, what else do you mm -hmm. see? Well, something that caught my attention as I'm reading this, thinking, wow, you know, things have just uh, deteriorated, as you had mentioned, so rapidly. And, and now we know that the earth is going to be destroyed with a flood. But w something that caught my attention was that the Lord was grieved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I thought of Ezekiel 33, 11, which says the Lord uh, has no pleasure in the destruction of the wicked. Mm -hmm. This was something that, that grieved him, which shows that God experiences pain and sorrow. And I thought, you know, the fact that we serve a God who, who can empathize and has feelings really is um, uh, something good we can take out of this story. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, can you share uh, other examples in Scripture where divine judgment came as a result of wickedness and rampant wickedness? Mm -hmm. Where can you think of in Scripture? Mm -hmm. so. I think about the narrative of Sodom and Gomorrah and they're, they're destroyed by fire because of wickedness. Mm. And you know, just like Sumiso said, uh, if you read the narrative, they, the Lord says there's not even 10 people in yeah. that city. Mm -hmm. In that, those two cities, uh, it's like, I, what's shocking to me, John, you talk about perfect creation. I mean, Satan was such a deceiver, such a liar. Mm -hmm. If he had said, follow me and this is what it will look like, mm. Mm. we would all run to God. Mm. 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 But the, the degeneration to where it's just evil continually, mm -hmm. is just really tragic. Yeah. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. So we're seeing the effects of the human nature taking place. And Nicole, what stuck, uh, stuck out to you? Well, I mean, another example is not as widespread, but I think about the temple and, the, and Christ coming in and overturning the table mm-hmm. because there's wickedness in his house. Mm-hmm. And that's him. Den of thieves. And den of thieves. And so, you know, the, when there's rampant wickedness, he just, he's like, I, I can't do that. I can't take this from you all in this district, this kind of lack of love. And so I see it in that, in that situation also. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, excellent. Mm-hmm. Rodney, please, you have a comment. There is another example um, with Nineveh. Praise God, it turned out to be a positive story, but Mm -hmm. uh, it was there. The Bible says that their wickedness came up before me, says God, which is why I was contemplating judgment on them. But thank God they repented. But here's another example of the level of um, intensity of sin. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm. You know, John, that really reinforces what Travis said earlier, that God is not willing that any should Should perish. Some people look at the flood and they go, well, that's kind of a mean, vindictive God. Mm -hmm. God didn't want anyone to perish in that flood. Mm -hmm. He wanted them all to get into the ark of safety. And uh, yeah, what a great story Rodney pointed out with Nineveh, where the whole city repents Mm -hmm. in sackcloth and ashes when the Mm -hmm. prophet comes to them. Mm -hmm. We often look at judgments from the human's perspective or the recipients of judgment, but looking from God's perspective, Travis, how are these judgments of God also acts of mercy? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I contemplated that as I was thinking, you know, as I was going over the study. And I think, uh, you know, we talked about in a a prior study that um, God is a God of free will and he gives us what we want. I mean, he, he's not going to stop us if we want to, to do something. Unfortunately, the consequences or results of sin is death. And, uh, and I'm sure we see here that it grieves the heart of God. But there's one thing that I've thought as I've looked through the Old Testament and seen stories like this is if he allows sin to continue, mm. more of his people will be destroyed. And, you know, in Sodom and Gomorrah, none of those people were going to repent. He could allow that to be more widespread and more people continue to lose their lives. Or he can end that and lives are saved. So, well, it's a hard thing. I know the, uh, for him to do that, I'm sure, because he loves them. Um, it's also merciful because, well, they don't have to experience maybe the consequences of their sins as they go on because to experience the consequences of sin and, and degrade, you know, over time mm-hmm. um, can be a sorrowful thing and they didn't have to experience it. That's just what I thought. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Even in this apparent helpless, wicked condition, God is going to find an individual. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Uh, Puya, would you read for us Genesis chapter 6 and verse 8? And let's see here, uh, why did the Lord give a special assignment to this individual and who was he? Sure, and I'll be reading from the New King James Version, Genesis 6, verse 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Hmm. What was there, Puya? What is it about Noah that... I, I believe the word is grace. Right. Noah found grace. And uh, I believe if we continue reading uh, the, the context of the story will help us understand that Noah uh, obeyed God and um, mm-hmm. by his faith, uh, he listened to God's instructions. Mm-hmm. And so um, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, meaning God was gracious to Noah. Mm-hmm. What else do we learn about Noah? Let's uh, read verses 13 to 22. Nicole, would you read those for us, please? 6, 13 to 22. The New International Version says, So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. So make yourself an ark of cypress wood, Make rooms in it and coat it with pitch inside and out. This is how you are to build it. The ark is to be 300 cubits long, 50 cubits wide, and 30 cubits high. Make a roof for it, leaving below the roof an opening one cubit high all around. Put a door in the side of the ark and make lower, middle, and upper decks. 
I am going to bring floodwaters on the earth to destroy all life under the heavens, every creature that has the breath of life in it. Everything on earth will perish, but I will establish my covenant with you and you will enter the ark, you and your sons and your wife and your son's wives with you. You are to bring into the ark two of all living creatures, male and female, to keep them alive with you. Two of every kind of bird, of every kind of animal, and of every kind of creature that moves along the ground will come to you and be kept alive. You are to take every kind of food that is to be eaten and store it away as food for you and for them. Noah did everything just as God commanded him. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. God discloses everything uh, to Noah about what he would do, even the blueprints mm -hmm. of, this, uh, of this ark. Yeah. And Addison, if you would read for us and let us, let us see, why did God reveal, chapter 7, verses 1 through 5, why does God uh, select Noah and his family? And I'm reading from the NASB. Verse 1, Then the Lord said to Noah, Enter the ark, you and all your household, for you alone I have seen to be righteous before me in this time. You shall take with you of every clean animal by sevens, a male and his female, and of the animals that are not clean too, a male and his female. Also of the birds of the sky by sevens, male and female, to keep offspring alive on the face of all the earth. For after seven more days, I will send rain on the earth 40 days and 40 nights, and I will blot out from the face of the land every living thing that I have made. Noah did according to all that the Lord had commanded him. Mm -hmm. In an age of rampant wickedness, Amazing. Mm -hmm. why does God tell Noah, or yeah, why does God tell Noah that he is the one selected for this assignment? Travis. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, this was really powerful. I go back to verse 8, right? Noah found grace. He found it, which means he was looking for it. Then I thought of the verse, if you seek me, you will find me if you search for me with all your heart. Grace is open to anyone right. who seeks the Lord. Right. Then I thought, what does it mean to be righteous? The Bible says if we confess our sins, we're faithful and just, and he will cleanse us from all, he'll forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So a righteous person is someone who's confessed their sins to God. All this was available to all of them. Anyone there could have confessed their sins and found grace in the eyes of the Lord. But unfortunately, as Derek said earlier about Sodom and Gomorrah, there was only but a few who were willing to find that grace. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, back to the imagery of running to God mm -hmm. rather than hiding or running away. Mm -hmm. You can't find grace in the eyes of the Lord when you're running away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? That's right. Yeah. It's when you're running to Him, and of course you've got the beautiful picture, actually even more than running to God, God running to us in the parable mm -hmm. of the prodigal son, the Father running to mm -hmm. meet us. Mm -hmm. But we'll never find that grace mm -hmm. if we're hiding or running away. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the picture here, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and Noah, he trusted God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when God said, build a boat and get into it, even though there's no rain for another mm. seven days, He yeah. does it. Yeah. Mm. Yes. And that's, that's more a testimony of His loving relationship mm. with God. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Right? He trusts the yes. one that mm. He has committed yeah. His life to. Yeah. What a declaration that God would say, you have, I have found you to be righteous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, imagine yeah. that. <laughs> Nicole. Mm. I was just going to say, just, I was going to just, put the word on that Derek described, which is obedience. Mm. And that's all that God wants from us is obedience. And if we love and trust him, we'll be obedient because he knows what's best for us. And so I think Noah found that. He was obedient to God and trusted him with all mm -hmm. of his heart. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Sabina. And I see also a very clear characteristic here in Noah that he was a person that could go, you know, in the opposing side of the current just mm -hmm. applying for our reality nowadays, we are also called by God to do so many things that for other people may sound a little different or 
not what they would do in certain circumstances. Because look at Noah, he had to stop doing whatever else he was doing. He had to make, start building this ark and probably people were looking at him and thinking that he was crazy and wondering, what are you doing? Why are you stopping and everything else you are doing just to build this ark? What do you think? What do you have in your mind? While he, deep in his heart, had to trust God's word right. and remain faithful to, to that word that God had, had given him that no one else around him believed. Mm -hmm. So I think that is, this also speaks of uh, Noah's faithfulness. Yes. You know, like we are reading here that he was a righteous person, that he walked with God, and only intimacy and this close relationship with God will help us to stay firm you know, even when things around us are not collaborating or are not corroborating with what God spoke to us through His Word and through His Spirit. Mm. Mm -hmm. What a message of encouragement that yeah. in every generation, God has not been without a witness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And even our viewers, participants, you may feel, you may be in a university or in a setting where you feel that nobody fears God, nobody knows God, mm -hmm. but God has His witnesses. Yes. Mm -hmm. And He yeah. has you in a strategic place and a purpose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What a beautiful thing. So, Miso. What really caught my attention was that his family was also saved. To me, it tells me that live your life in such a way that when you say something to your family, mm -hmm. they can see that mm. you're a genuine and sincere person mm. and agree as, lo as the Lord is guiding you. So we are witnesses, yeah. first to our families and to everyone around. Amen. Amen. Yeah, and mm -hmm. yet at the same time, I was mm -hmm. thinking even today that when the door was finally closed, that I just imagine Noah, he's called a preacher of righteousness yes. by Peter. He'd been preaching for over a hundred years. years. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I imagine him, John, weeping oh. because mm -hmm. th there was so much more room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I agree with Samiso 100%. What a beautiful tribute that his family chose to, to join him in the ark. They, mm -hmm. They believed he was what the real thing, right? Yeah. That he really did love God and was mm -hmm. following God. But, but mm -hmm. how tragic that this massive boat, um, the animals obeyed. Yeah. It mm. says they came. Mm. Mm. The animals obeyed the call of their creator, yeah. but the vast majority of the people disobeyed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Think of the word ark. So the Hebrew word that is translated here, uh, ark, teva, is used when it's describing Moses' basket where he was hidden as a babe. Mm. It's the same word that also describes the Ark of the Covenant. What significance do you see here in mm. that? <laughs> Puya. Uh, just as the Ark uh, during the flood provided uh, a way of sur uh, survival and salvation, uh, the, the Ark for Moses, as well as the Ark of the Covenant, I believe, symbolizes the plan of God for our survival mm -hmm. and our uh, um, way to be saved out of the problem of sin and the problems of this world. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. So that of safety or salvation. Uh, Jason, what do you see? Hey, you, you've clearly got God's protection and God himself present because we know like when Moses' basket was put there, mm -hmm. it wasn't just coincidence that it ended up, you know, with the Pharaoh's daughter and the Ark of the Covenant. That's literally God's presence. So we have mm -hmm. here God's presence connected with this word Ark. So God is there. Yeah, he's destroying the flood, but he's also saving his people. And he's, we've talked about how personal he is. He's personally present there with this ark. Wow, so mm -hmm. it also denotes the presence mm -hmm. of God. Mm -hmm. Wow, powerful. Mm -hmm. Rodney. John, I also notice that God is the master designer of all the three examples. The master designer <laughs> of the ark itself, the mm -hmm. the the uh, the basket for for Moses and also the Ark of the Covenant. Mm -hmm. but what is striking is that God can do it all by Himself, but He chooses us. In in the case of um, the flood, no, He chooses Moses' mother. He chooses yeah. Moses um, to help to build the, the Ark. And so it is with this God that He's the master designer, but He collaborates with us. Mm -hmm. He wants us to be yeah. co-laborers with Him in the plan mm -hmm. of salvation. Mm -hmm. mm, excellent, wow. excellent yeah. thoughts on that. 
Samiso, what do you see significant in that? Yeah, I'm glad you brought up the point of the Ark of the Covenant because mm -hmm. I had not even thought about that. But as you say that, it reminded me that in the Ark of the Covenant was the law. Yes. And that's to protect us. Mm -hmm. That's a way to protect us by obeying God's law. Mm -hmm. We are protected. Amen. And over the top of that law was the mercy. mercy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes. And, and that's what this the ark is all is about. It's about true? mercy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's right. If God is not willing that any should perish. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's right. Mm -hmm. Pastor Derek alluded to what Peter called Noah. Nicole, would you read for us 2 Peter chapter 2 and verse 5? And I want us to zero in here on what he is described as. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 5. The New International Version um, says, If he did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on its ungodly people, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and seven others. Mm -hmm. So here we have it. In the Old Testament, early in the book of Genesis, and that Noah was a preacher of righteousness. 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 Mm -hmm. You recall it says in Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 6 uh, that it describes the Lord our righteousness. 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 Yeah. He was a preacher of that, the good news. Mm -hmm. M blended with the warning of, in, of coming judgment mm -hmm. was the hope of salvation yes. and of righteousness. Mm. Uh, another perspective that I'm thinking through as we're discussing this is that we also see, I believe, uh, God's justice, right? The reason for His righteousness is not only because He's merciful, but He's also just. And I'm thinking from the perspective of the victims, uh, who were suffering, I mean, from beginning with Abel, who was killed, and then through a few generations, by the time of Noah, uh, as, as we read in Genesis earlier, uh, many of them were um, evil towards others, and they were uh, causing a lot of harms and destruction. So I'm, think about, I'm thinking about innocent children who were probably suffering at the hands of evil people. I'm thinking about innocent women, and especially the most vulnerable groups of the society. And from their, from their perspective, I believe the flood was uh, God's uh, mean of showing His justice, saying, hey, I care about you, right? I can, no longer, um, I can no longer let this evil go by, so let me step in and, and save the people through the ark um, who would want to obey at the same time and the suffering of you know, uh, the innocent people. Mm. Thank you for sharing that. Talking about the flood here, you know that there was an undoing of creation. Mm. Creation brought order and beauty to what the Bible describes, you know, a planet where there was darkness and void. Mm -hmm. But the flood undid that. Mm -hmm. Laurel, would you read for us Genesis 7, 11 and 12? And let's see where we see this undoing of creation. All right. I'll be reading from the New American Standard Bible. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, and on the 17th day of the month, on the same day, all the foundations of the great deep burst open and the floodgates of the sky were opened. The rain fell upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. Mm -hmm. So just alone here, what do you see as an undoing? Mm. of creation. There are references to creation. Travis? <laughs> well, before the world was created, it was just a watery mass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, then he, the Bible says that he divided the, the waters. And so here, and then he created the earth. And so now we hear, see the world in one watery mass again. Everything is undone, mm -hmm. one watery mass. And it's as if he's going to, well, it seems like recreate the earth in a Ooh. sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, with new media technology, people have perhaps seen like underwater volcanoes that erupt mm -hmm. and you can see it from a satellite. Mm -hmm. It's like the whole, the whole atmosphere is just kind mm -hmm. of 20 kilometers high or whatever. You can just imagine, it, this is not just, oh, there's a little water running. Mm -hmm. This is like the fountains of the deep break loose. Mm -hmm. And uh, it must have been um, a terrifying 
-hmm. event mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. because they'd never seen anything like it mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, that's, that's, it's an undoing of creation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. indeed. Yeah. Jason? Hey, uh, God here, in this case, basically changing the weather, changing the climate, the whole system that they had lived on physically is all being uprooted. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's go on to see what the Bible, how the Bible describes the flood and its effects. Sabina, would you read for us in the same chapter 7, mm -hmm. verses 17 to 24? 17 to 24. Okay, so I'll be reading from the New King James Version, chapter 7, verses 17 to 24. And that's what it says. Now the flood was on the earth 40 days. The waters increased and lifted up the ark, and it rose high above the earth. The waters prevailed and greatly increased on the earth, and the ark moved about on the surface of the waters. And the waters prevailed exceedingly on the earth, and all the high hills under the whole heaven were covered. The waters prevailed fifteen cubits upward, and the mountains were covered. And no flesh died that moved on the earth, birds and cattle and beasts, and every creeping thing that creeps on the earth, and every man, all in whose nostrils was the breath of the spirit of life. All that was on the dry land died. So he destroyed all living things which were on the face of the ground, both men and cattle, creeping things and bird of the air. They were destroyed from the earth. Only Noah and those who were with him in the ark remain alive. And the waters prevailed on the earth 150 days. Thank you so much. If you can um, just imagine that. But even in the midst hmm. of that, and after the flood, and as the waters subside, there's a beautiful expression in the first part of chapter 8, verse 1 that says, then God remembered Noah. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Was he ever forgotten <laughs> by God? <laughs> Why this expression? Mm -hmm. Sumiso. I, I think the word remember, and it's used in many parts of the Bible, in this context, it's not recollection of memory, but more taking action. So that, that's the context in, in which it's used. When the Lord remembered the children of Israel, for example, He took action to deliver them. Mm -hmm. So this word is saying, taking action, mm -hmm. when God okay. took action. Mm -hmm. All right, Travis. Well, I, I, I agree with Samiso, and, and I just want to take it a step further, and I'm thinking God is remembering His covenant with him. All right. yeah. he, had made, he had made him a promise, yeah. mm -hmm. and He is just saying, <laughs> I've made him a promise, I'm going to fulfill it now. So that's mm -hmm. what I, I believe, because when I went and studied spots where he said, and he remembered, and he remembered, and it's all almost very always consistent with he's remembering a promise he made, he's fulfilling he promised me a promise he made, which shows that God is faithful, God is faithful, God is faithful, and here we see it again, God is faithful. Mm -hmm. So the Lord God made a promise to Noah that he would save him through the flood. Uh, how else do you see God continuing to fulfill his promises to Noah even after the flood? Sabina. Well, we just read here of all this convulsion that took place in, in the earth. So at the moment that we read that God was able to bring things to calm again and making the wind pass and everything come back to place, it shows God's faithfulness. And as much as He had been able to create earth out of nothing, as we read on Genesis 1, now again He's going to show His power once again to recreate things, even when they look like they are upward, upside down, He's able, it doesn't matter whatever He brings for judgment, He's able to make something new again and again. So in every step, what we see here is that the quality that Noah would exhibit would have to be faith, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Trusting that God would provide mm -hmm. salvation, a way out, a way through, Mm -hmm. every step of the way. Mm -hmm. Rodney, please. Yeah. And John, sometimes we, we forget that this event is a catastrophic event. Mm -hmm. This is not like a little pool pop up somewhere. This, yeah. <laughs> the Bible describes it as almost like recreating the earth. And sometimes yeah. we tend to think 
that it was the ark that saved Noah and his family. No, it was God that would use the ark to save Noah. It was God's hand guiding that ark so that it was not destroyed by this catastrophic, catastrophic yeah. event. Mm -hmm. And even when the waters started to subside, Noah still kept his eyes on God because we, we read a little further down that he sent out you know, ravens and doves to, to see if the water subsided. But mm -hmm. he actually waited on God's instructions as to when he needs to leave the ark. And so it is with us today. If we put our trust, as you said, John, step by step with God, he will lead us in all paths of righteousness. Oh, mm. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I'm so glad you mentioned that. There are some events that were indica uh, indicative for Noah when it was time to leave. Jason, would you read those for us? Genesis chapter 8, verses 5 to 14. The New King James Version says in Genesis chapter 8, verses 5 through 14, And the waters decreased continually until the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains were seen. So it came to pass at the end of 40 days that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made. Then he sent out a raven which kept going to and fro until the waters had dried up from the earth. He also sent out from himself a dove to see if the waters had receded from the face of the ground. But the dove found no resting place for the sole of her foot, and she returned into the ark to him, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. So he put out his hand and took her, and drew her into the ark to himself. Mm -hmm. And he waited yet another seven days, and again he sent the dove out from the ark. Then the dove came to him in the evening, and behold, a freshly plucked olive leaf was in her mouth and Noah knew that the waters had receded from the earth. So he waited yet another seven days and sent out the dove, which did not return again to him anymore. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass in the 601st year, in the first month, the first day of the month, that the waters were dried up from the earth. And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and indeed the surface of the ground was dry. Mm. And in the second month, on the 27th day of the month, the earth was dried. Mm -hmm. So even with the earth already dry, as we're reading, there was still something that it indicated to Noah and his family when it was time to leave the mm. ark. Addison, would you read for us verses 15 and 16? What was that? Sure. Genesis 8, verse 15. Then God spoke to Noah, saying, Go out of the ark, you and your wife and your sons and your sons' wives with you. What was it there? Thank you for that. God did what? Told him. Tell him. God spoke to him and yeah. told him. Mm -hmm. What a reminder for this, this is for us, friends, that we can't go by sight, but we must go on God's Word. Mm -hmm. We must yes. trust in God's Word for mm -hmm. His timing. Mm -hmm. What a powerful lesson. Sumiso? I think I would like to applaud Noah for his patience. I, I can just yeah. imagine being mm -hmm. stuck with animals and so <laughs> forth. I would be sending out a dove every 10 minutes, <laughs> just saying, when is the time to go out? Yeah. And what really occurs to me is that the place of safety might not always be the most convenient. Well, but God does save mm. us in different mm. ways. Mm. Yeah. And you know, uh, John, if, if Noah had had the attitude of the builders of the Tower of Babel later in, mm -hmm. in, John, in uh, Genesis 11, he might have said, I'm not going out of the ark. Mm -hmm. yeah. True. Yeah. I might get another flood. Yeah. But yeah. verse 18 That's says, true. so Noah went out. Yeah. God mm -hmm. says, go out. Verse 18, yeah. so Noah we went out. Yeah. So here yeah. again, and I don't know, I've never thought about what Sabina said, that God may have done some recreation. I've always thought it looked terrible out there, mm -hmm. you know, still all torn up and devastated mm -hmm. with, yeah. with uh, mm -hmm. I didn't think it looked very beautiful, but maybe God even provided a little shelter for them. Mm -hmm. But he went out anyway, yeah. because yeah. God said, go out. Mm 
Mm -hmm. That's right. And and you know, there's something in this whole story of trusting our relationship with God rather than just what we think or feel. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Puya. I want to pick up on what Pastor Derek just said about trusting God's word, and I believe this is the key lesson I take away from this story because Noah trusted the word of God above the so-called science of the day because they observed nature and they say, oh, it has never rained before, so there will be no flood. But Noah trusted God mm -hmm. and there was flood. And as Pastor Derek mentioned, it, Noah probably thought, OK, would it be safer to stay here in the ark in case if there's another flood? But he continued to trust the word of God above his own sense and mm -hmm. uh, I guess the general you know, human nature to trust our own perspective. And I think mm -hmm. this is an important lesson for all of us to continue to trust the word of God above our own personal feelings or our own personal perspective. Mm -hmm. It's better to trust, trust the word of God. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Yeah. It can be a frightening thing, can't it, to step out into an uncertain world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jason, what do you see? So Noah trusted God, but he still did sort of follow science in the sense he still sent out the birds. He still kind of tested mm -hmm. out to see if there was any uh, life coming back in. Mm -hmm. And so I think uh, it's not a bad thing to follow science, but the key is that the science needs to honor God. And so in the end of the day, he makes the decision not based on the science, but based on God. So he still is paying attention to what's going on. We don't, mm -hmm. you know, turn off our eyes and ears, but we follow God first. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Nicole, keep that. Let me uh, let me see what Rodney, you had your hand up. As, uh, as, as Puya was speaking and also Jason, there is a text that came to my mind. Mm -hmm. It is taken from Proverbs 14 and verse 12. If I may read it quickly, it's coming from the New King James Version, Proverbs 14 and verse 12. Just a reminder for us. There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you for that. Powerful. Nicole? I was sitting here and I was, as we were reading through this, and I can see Mo, well, me, I could see Noah asking, why am I taking seven clean animals and only two unclean animals? And I realized God takes care of us from the beginning. And so in this case, he knew at the end, Noah would want to sacrifice and, and, and give testament to God. And so he only could do that if he had enough animals to be able to do the sacrifices. Mm -hmm. And so he had the clean animals, the extra pairs to provide sacrifices and they still could procreate and make more of them. And so God takes care of us from the beginning mm -hmm. if we just trust in him. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. How can we experience such a deep and abiding faith and trust in God here as Noah has demonstrated? <laughs> Addison? What lessons can you draw? Well, John, uh, there's there's quite a few, I think. Uh, but the one thing that comes to mind is as a part of experiencing that deep, abiding uh, trust in our loving Heavenly Father, I think it's, it's spending time, practically speaking, it's spending time with Him every day, spending time in the Word, but then not just reading, but applying it to our life through the power of the Spirit, going out being a blessing to those around us, whether in school or in work or whatever we do. Um, I think that, that that grows, that deepens our connection with God in a very uh, powerful way. And um, to stand on those promises means more than reading them. It means to live them out by the grace of God. Mm -hmm. We can learn something significant from an activity. Noah's first activity after leaving the ark. But Travis, share with us one more point and then uh, we'll ask you to read chapter 8, verse 20. Well, I'm just thinking of all the Bible characters. And if we, you know, we've read the stories or, or, or we should read the stories of the Bible characters, but it's not like all of them just had faith. Daniel just didn't say, well, I'm yeah. going to just pray to the Lord and get thrown into the lion's den. But I, it was increments of faith. Mm -hmm. He trusted him with this and the next, and I think for even people just coming to the Lord, trust Him with something small. He will come through. And then maybe trust Him with something big, you know, but but He will, pr God is not someone who's just arbitrary, random, say, oh, I, I love you, and just take me at my, my word. He says, taste and see that the Lord is good. He wants you to take Him at His word. And I've learned for myself that over time, 
little by little, I saw him come through here. He came through and, and more and more, I trust him with more and more till finally I'm like, Lord, how can I not trust you with everything? And I just think it's a walk. It's a progressive walk for, uh, to, to learn to trust God. Amen. Mm -hmm. And I have found that God will do an extraordinary thing for someone who is sincerely seeking <laughs> to have so God mm -hmm. fulfill God. His, the, uh, His promises. Mm -hmm. He so goes true. to extraordinary lengths to do it. Amen. Amen. Yeah, Amen. yeah. yeah you That's think so of the Ethiopian who's yeah. reading the Scripture yeah. and God I mean, the Lord transports, uh, I don't know how he transported Philip, yeah. mm -hmm. but boom, he's right there by the chariot. Yeah. I Thank you for that thought. And I think that we need to read these stories like Noah mm -hmm. with that in mind. God will do go to extraordinary mm -hmm. measures mm -hmm. when a heart is turned toward him. Right. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Yeah. And notice how, Mo or, I'm sorry, Noah turns toward him, what we can learn from his first activity. Travis, read for us chapter 8 and verse 20. And what can we learn from this? And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Then Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every clean animal and of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on the altar. Mm. What can we learn? What is significant about this first activity of Noah's after leaving the ark? Mm. Sabina. He certainly attributes to God his salvation. <laughs> so he knows that after everything that took place, it was God who had been with him in the beginning, who had alerted him, who had helped him to build the ark and preach righteousness. And here was him again, recognizing that it was God who had made all that flood to stop and allowed him to, you know, in safety and with his family to be back to life. So I think he recognizes that God is in there is still. Yeah. So yeah. I have a question. Sorry, John. Please. <laughs> Did God really want him to do all of that? Um, he, ki he kills one of every clean animal. Um, I don't know. I, I, and, you know, I, I agree with Sabina 100%. It's his way of saying thank you to God. Mm -hmm. This is worship. But, yeah. but, but I think yeah. it's actually his heart surrender and his love mm -hmm. for God mm -hmm. that is really what's pleasing. Yeah. So the next verse talks about God smelling the aroma. Mm -hmm. I think the real aroma is the the surrender and love of his heart. But mm -hmm. but is there any indication that God instructed him to sacrifice one of every clean animal when mm -hmm. he came out of the ark? I don't know. I don't have an answer. I mean, he did it, yeah. mm -hmm. and it was a way of saying thank you. But mm -hmm. was it was it that was that mm -hmm. something God wanted him to do? I, don't know. Yeah, we don't see record of God uh, requiring that, um, but it really does show the expression <laughs> or the aroma, we might even say, of the heart. Yeah. What we see here quickly, you know, it was when we look into chapter 9, is that the diet of humanity changed, of course, we see, mm -hmm. uh, necessitated by the flood and the effects of that. So there was a change because there's no vegetation <laughs> now at this point. <laughs> And so uh, now there's a permitting of eating flesh foods at this time. Um, but even with that, there are some restrictions, aren't there? Mm -hmm. that God mm -hmm. gave some restrictions and guidelines, even in the eating of flesh foods and that there would be consequences. But I want us to zero in here as we draw to a close on this sign of the covenant that God gave. And I'd like for us to look at this here. Nicole, if you could read for us Genesis 9, 8 through 17 here, and let us look for what was the sign of the Lord's covenant. The New International Version of Genesis 9, 8 through 17 says, Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, I now establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you, and with every living creature that was with you, the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals, all those that came out of the ark with you, every living creature on earth. I establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is a sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature with you, a covenant for all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the clouds and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, 
I'll remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters come, become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will say, see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. So God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant I have established between me and all life on the earth. God enters into a covenant with every living thing Amen. Mm -hmm. and He gives us a sign of that covenant. Amen. I mean, what an incredible God. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you here is what, what promises of God, can you share a promise that has really been precious to you, um, some that, where God has made sure to you, mm. any promise that you have just found precious mm. in your experience? Travis. Well, I have promises, but they change from time to time, right, depending on circumstances. But one of my favorite lately, maybe it's because I'm studying, is uh, Romans 10, 13. Anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And I believe Amen. that it fits the context of the sure. flood. Yeah. Anyone who calls on the name of the Lord. Yes. Amen. Amen. Sabina. I think that for me right now, no greater promise is the promise of eternity mm. and the second coming of Jesus that is approaching. So I just look forward for that day when He's going to come again and take us to heaven. Amen. I think all of us may have uh, needs of reassurances of God's promises and God shows us, He gives us signs of, the, of that covenant, mm -hmm. of His promises that He will fulfill. So we praise God for that. Amen. Amen. Thank you, John. Well, what a blessing. And I was thinking, where the Lord says, quoted again in Hebrews 13, I will never leave you mm -hmm. nor forsake you. Nor forsake mm -hmm. you. That, that was what Noah needed when the boat was really going up and down. Mm -hmm. And it's a lesson for each one of us, isn't it? Yeah. We have a God who wants us not to run away, but to run to Him and to find grace because grace is there mm -hmm. in the eyes of the Lord. What a beautiful testimony. And I want to thank you for joining us as we're in this journey through the book of Genesis. There's a lot of stories and details, but the overriding message is that our Creator God is also our Redeemer, and He loves you with an immeasurable and unfailing love, wants you to spend eternity with Him. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that even in the message of the flood, that there is a, a, a word of hope, an ark of safety, and thank you, Jesus, that you are our ark of safety. You provide all that we need for deliverance. We rest in your grace today. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us for Hope Sabbath School. Stay with us on this journey through the book of Genesis. Don't keep it to yourself. Go out and be a blessing to those around you. <laughs>